NBC News broke the story this morning actually that a fifth previously unidentified person was at the controversial Donald Trump Jr. Veselnitskaya meeting at Trump Tower. NBC chose not to publish this person's name, but the Associated Press has identified him as Renat Akhmetshin, a longtime Washington lobbyist who was accused in court filings of being a former Soviet military intelligence officer who quote, developed a special expertise in running negative public relations campaigns, although you should understand that he denies that charge. He's also been accused in a $1 billion legal fight over a mining operation in Russia of masterminding a scheme to hack the mining company's computers and undermine their lawsuit. Now, this is a quote from Alan Futeris, who is his lawyer, who says he is a US citizen. He told me specifically he was not working for the Russian government and in fact laughed when I asked him that question, which that case closed. I guess at this point, oh. um, but you should understand that that is a statement from his lawyer. Um, now, this is how it was described by Akhmetshin. He says he served in the Soviet army from 1986 to 1988 after he was drafted, but was not trained in spy tradecraft. He said his unit operated in the Baltics and was quote, loosely part of counterintelligence. But he says he was not formally a part of Russian intelligence operations and is certainly not these days. Um, now on to the meeting. So he has actually spoken out about that meeting with Donald Trump Jr. and Veselnitskaya and others. Uh, Akhmetshin said he had learned about the meeting only that day when Veselnitskaya asked him to attend. In fact, he said he went in a t-shirt and jeans because he was unprepared for the meeting. He said that Veselnitskaya brought with her a plastic folder with printed out documents that detailed what she believed was the flow of illicit funds to the DNC. Donald Trump Jr. asked the attorney at that meeting if she had all the evidence to back up her claims, including whether she could demonstrate the flow of the money. But Veselnitskaya said the Trump campaign would need to research it more. After that, Trump Jr. lost interest, according to Akhmetshin, which with the work ethic we know of the Trump family makes sense actually. They had to do the research, so they bad out. Right. Now, Akhmetshin said he does not know if Veselnitskaya's documents were provided by the Russian government, as has been alleged. He said he thinks she left the materials with the Trump associates. It was unclear if she handed the documents to anyone in the room or simply left them behind, he said. So he, at first as I was reading his denials, it, it, they seemed pretty good. He was honestly, I was halfway towards convinced. It, the thing about the t-shirt coming in and he's like, no, 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 look, I'm willing to talk to the Senate Judiciary Committee. I got called in on that day, I, I don't know. And and it seemed like they lost interest and they didn't care about this thing that she was trying to push. And so I'm, I'm ready to talk to AP, I'm ready to talk to anybody. And I was like, yeah, it sounds kind of credible. And just because he was in the uh, Soviet military at one point doesn't mean that he's Soviet, you know, that, that he's KGB forever, or et cetera. And, and one expert put it that way, oh, you never leave the Russian spies that. How do you know that? So So I wasn't that convinced, but then, you find out that he mainly represents the the guy that I'm not as good at pronouncing Russian names as you are. The the female Russian lawyer, Veselnitskaya. Yeah, that she, <laughs> she is the lawyer for the incredibly rich rich Russian oligarch that he represents for lobbying interests. Yeah. Wait a minute. You guys are both representing the same guy. The main thing that she was pushing was to get sanctions lifted off of him. So you know they, what the Obama administration did was they said. Certain Russians will not be allowed to, their bank accounts will be frozen. People always say that like, oh, that's the obscure thing about adoption. Russia struck back by saying, oh yeah, Americans won't be allowed to adopt in Russia. The adoption part's not the real part. Yeah, it's the so we blocked the Russian oligarchs from coming into the country and most importantly froze their bank accounts. That matters a lot. That oligarch is connected directly to Putin and so, Wait a minute, you're his lobbyist and you've been working on deals with him for a long time and you just, oh, the lawyer just called me in. It's I the don't only know. thing that matters, the frozen <laughs> assets, that's all that it comes oh, down yes, to. Yes, definitely, it's the frozen assets. So then I, uh, uh, a reporter, Steve Levin, who's literally written the book on this, in 2007 he book, uh, wrote a book called The Oil and the Glory, tracks all of the, the, the Russian oligarchs and the spying and all the things that goes on. And he said, of all the people that he's ever met and written about, he said, I know of no Russian gun for hire who managed to run his campaigns so successfully, running circles around purportedly much more seasoned Washington hands. As this guy, uh, Ahmed Shin. Yeah. And then when I read that, I was like, oh, he just yeah. ran a couple circles around me. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
So I yeah. never for one second didn't think that Trump knew about this. First of all, I, he's a guy who is so, first of all, he talks, about, I guess it's second of all, because I already said first of all, but his family is so close, right? He talks, yeah. he was so consumed though. Mm -hmm. Can we read those quotes before we do the, the speculation about that? Because I have his yeah. direct quotes concerning that. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, and I will say just for the record, um, this is just add this one more thing that about that meeting that Donald Trump Jr. could not be relied on to accurately recall. I had personally thought that there were no more facts about the story that theoretically could have been lies. Right. Um, but he again forgot about this person and there is a sixth person apparently or one more person who has not yet been identified, at least as of us recording this. Uh, God only knows who that will turn out to be. Um, but so let's that turn was in addition to, Trump. to the translator? Yeah, because there's the, I believe so, yes. Okay. There's the interpreter, and then they talk about a, a sixth a, a person. Six exactly, person, yes. Yeah. So let's turn now to Trump. So uh, look, uh, the father Trump has said that he didn't know about Donald Trump Jr's meeting uh, up until very recently. Even though lawyers for the family have apparently known about it at least since June, uh, the father Trump says that he doesn't know about the meeting. On Wednesday afternoon, he told Reuters, quote, no, that I didn't know until a couple of days ago when I heard about this. No, I didn't know about that, referring to the meeting, which seems strong and absolute until later that night when he says, in fact, maybe it was mentioned at some point. Yeah. So right. that was a quick turnaround there. Is it impossible that he got wind of this new report that's coming out or what might come out over the weekend? I don't know, but that's a quick turnaround from I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know to maybe I knew. Yeah, and there's no way I ever believed for a second he didn't know. I mean, I, 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 you know how close the two are, the father, the son, the stepson, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the son-in-law. And you know how consumed Donald Trump was with the Clintons and opposition research and all of that. Had, there's no way that Donald Trump Jr., independent of anybody, got this information, even if he did, that he didn't go to his father and say, hey, listen, you know, we found something out here. And he was like, oh, great, great, pursue it. I mean, there's no, there's no way. And besides which, you have him on tape. So there is one part of the story that the Trumps say that I do believe, and I'll explain why in a second. But we had him on tape, we showed it a couple of days ago on the show, where Donald Trump, in between the time that Trump Jr. gets the meeting, but before he has the meeting, says, "Oh, I, you know, we're going to have a lot of interesting information about Hillary Clinton soon." Now he does at that point he knows that his son has the meeting, right? But but doesn't know that they're going to get nothing out of the meeting, so that's why he's like, "Oh, soon we'll have all this dirt on Hillary Clinton." You have him on tape. So why did he then turn around and admit, "Yeah, I knew about the meeting." Okay. Well, one, he's an Inveterate liar, so he's like, okay, I'm just, you know, I lied before. I don't care. I lie all the time. Yeah. So I, this is my one millionth lie in over. Like if it was Obama, he'd be like, wow, oh my god, just a day ago I said I didn't know the meeting at all. If I say I know the meeting, that would be an unprecedented lie. Right. Such a brazen, obvious lie. Right. Trump's like, whatever. It's Tuesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> right so, there is that. But but I think that's not the only reason he did it. He could have just kept stonewalling. They must have some information, and he knows that investigators have. They're coming. Okay, that's, exactly. that's there's what like John an email said. Yeah. where yeah. he know that he knows, and that's Donald pure speculation, Trump obviously. Sent to Donald Trump Jr. Right. But we do know that all of a sudden he turned around and he's like, "Okay, fine, I knew about yeah. that." Yeah. Can I <laughs> really fast? Just, I mean, I think it's obvious based on the story, but we have to make sure that people know. We've already broken down how, regardless of whether anything came out of it. Let's let's say Donald Trump Jr. is right. Nothing came out of it. In the email, it was made clear to him that this was an attempt by the Russian government to do this. Which means that when he then goes and gives speeches about how it's all a big fraud and it's disgusting to say that Russia was involved, that means he is lying at that point. Even if he got nothing, he knew that they were trying. If Trump also knew about it this entire time, Trump has said it's a made up mythical witch hunt made up by the Democratic Party, whatever, about a billion times at this point. Yeah. Which would mean that he was knowingly lying in every one of those cases. Even if nothing was attained which from this meeting, surprising. we know that that's which a lie. Which isn't surprising now. Can we just dispense with that? Come on, even if you're like the most diehard Trump uh, supporter, you know he's a pathological liar, right? Even his friends say he's a pathological liar. Like if you're pretending that that's not true, 
Even you don't believe that. Right. Yes. Let, let me very, very quickly. This is from George H.W. Bush, at the time Vice President of the United States, May 9th, 1988, a letter to his son George uh, when he was a candidate for president. He said, George, we're about to sail into uncharted waters in terms of family scrutiny. scrutiny. We've all been through a lot of inquiry and microscopic probing. However, it's gonna get worse, not just for our family, but for the Dukakises and the Jacksons, that was Jesse Jackson too, hence this letter to family. He goes through a lot of this. He says, you're gonna get a lot of new friends, et cetera, et cetera. My plea is this, please do not contact any federal agency or department on anything. A call from a bush will get returned, but there's a great likelihood that it will be leaked, maybe deliberately misrepresented. I know it must sound very defensive, but believe me, every effort will be made to find some phone call, et cetera. He said, if this is a legitimate inquiry, call my office. It is certainly appropriate to contact your own government, but let's do it through my office so no one can accuse any of the family of trying to use influence. The difference between hmm. the Bushes, whatever you may think of them, and how they approached this sort of thing, and the Trumps who willy nilly lying about it to each other, yeah, I did, no, I didn't, I'm going behind the back, I'm going behind the back, everybody in the family, it seems, it seems did it. It's, I, I found it remarkable when I saw that. So that was very said. principled by George H.W. Bush and a great thing to do. It also shows, at least he knew his son was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he wrote it. To, I think he wrote it to everybody. But I do think he knew his son was an idiot too. Yeah. I don't think he was the He's first like, choice. He's like this knucklehead's anyway, yeah. gonna want another favor. He right. always wants a favor, just like and, Donald Trump Jr. And it's not just about the Bush. It's just about the way people do it and the way they know how to do it. And you don't get embroiled in yeah, something and, and like Trump this. Yeah, and Trump on Air Force One, to Michael's point, uh, said, "Well, I think anybody would have taken that meeting." That's not, I mean, look at the letter of George H.W. Right. Bush. Say, of course he wouldn't have taken that meeting, right? And Gore got a leaked tape of George W. Bush's uh, debate prep and, and refused to watch it. They turned it into the FBI, said this is probably stolen material right. and refused to watch it. Yes, there are actually decent people in the country. You're just not among them if you're in the Trump family. So, but final thing that I do believe them on, which then leads me to my theory on, on what's going, part of what's going on here. So when they say that they didn't get anything out of that meeting, it could be a lie, right? I mean, they, he's lied about every other part of the meeting. Oh, I didn't have the meeting. Oh, it was just about adoption. Okay, fine, it, but I didn't get information. Oh, now I didn't tell you about the fifth guy, and now here's the fifth guy. I didn't know that they were a part and connected to the Russian government. An email that says they're connected to the Russian government. He says, I love it. So his son is also a pathological liar, etc. But I do. Why do I believe them? Because after the meeting. Trump then came out and said, hey, if you've got those 30,000 emails that Hillary deleted Russia, send them over. He wouldn't have said that in public if they already had the emails or they already got information from the Russians or they already had a good enough connection to that particular Russian in the well, meeting that they just had. So I disagree the, with that point because I don't think he said send them over. I think he said someone should hack, someone should leak. Right. Which then theoretically, regardless if he was ever involved, would say, look, he called for it, but he didn't do it. It was some other group that did the hacking, did the leaking. Yeah, that's a big difference, actually. It's true, but it, but it's still the same, you know, thrust of what he's saying, right? Yeah. But it, you're, there is a difference. Yeah. And so, so the final part is a little bit of speculation on my part. Um, so you look more into Ahmed Shin, this fifth guy, and he is apparently, uh, by the way, once masterminded a hacking scheme. Great, uh, but uh, he also developed a special expertise um, uh, in running negative public relations campaigns. Hmm. That, so they come in. Goldstone writes the email. That's the music publicist guy that set up the meeting in the first place. Writes an email that so clearly says this is someone connected to the Russian government, and they have information that could help your father. Would, do you want to meet? He sends it to perhaps the dumbest person in the Trump family, Donald Trump Jr., and that is a heavy title to hold, right? And Donald Trump Jr. falls right into it and goes, I love it, right? <laughs> and, and then later, Goldstone again says, now you know that this meeting is happening with these people, right? right. And he goes, you're right, and I'll see you at four, right? So it is possible that, that the Russians said to Goldstone, hey, make this meeting happen, then we put it in our back pocket in case we need it. And it's possible that they tried it with both camps. You're talking about the blackmail. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. look, this is the guy that was apparently linked with the attempt to flip uh, Dana Rohrabacher as well. Right. Yeah. He was. I love Earlier that the Republicans use that as an excuse. They're like, no, he met with other legislators too, like Dana Rohrabacher. <laughs> like the <laughs> unbelievably corrupt Dana Rohrabacher. <laughs> the almost admittedly corrupt Dana Rohrabacher. <laughs> yeah, and con has Premier. been connected to the Russians for years, yeah. right? Anyway, so it, it might be that the Russians thought, let's, this is obviously illegal. We'll get them to do something illegal. We don't like in that. We're not going to give them the information. Whatever information we have, we'll use in whatever way we right. want. Right? We're not just going to hand it over to them. Right? But and I don't know that they tried it with the Hillary campaign. But maybe they tried it with both campaigns to be able to have blackmail on them. And 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 why? And who released it now? Who released these emails now? I don't know. So that's another really interesting question as to For why sure. now. Remember, Putin and, and Trump just had a meeting. Help us build independent media, become a member of the Young Turks, tytnetwork.com slash join.